In this video, we're going to take a look at the graduated tool and the selections that can be made using the adjustment brush. To begin with, let's first go to the tools menu up in the top left hand corner of Camera Raw, where you'll notice you'll have the graduated tool icon. Now you can either click on it or hit G on the keyboard to select the graduated filter. Now the first thing you'll notice with the graduated filter panel is that a lot of the features or sliders that are available there come from the basic panel, which is really quite neat. Now to use this tool, it's very similar to the gradient tool in Photoshop. You need to select one point on your image and then drag your mouse and stop at another point on your image. Now in this case, as you can see here, we've got some, um, some dotted lines that indicate the areas that we're actually selecting uh, on our image. So for this particular photograph, what I want to do is primarily only adjust the sky uh, just down to the sea in the uh, right hand corner of the image. So I'm going to get that just to sit about there in, in the height adjustment. And I, you can either, if, if you want to, you can have this um, parallel with your image or the uh, hor horizon line of, the, of your actual photograph, or you can actually adjust it at an epic particular angle that you actually want it to sit at. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at parallel to my to my image. So now that we have the area selected that we actually want to make adjustments to, we can begin to use the sliders in the panel. Now the sliders are going to be affected um, the same way as if you had a graduated selection in Photoshop. Only the certain areas of the selection are actually going to show the changes. So for example, as we make an exposure adjustment, you'll notice that the top of the image is actually being adjusted, but the bottom half of the selection isn't really being f affected that much. So as you can see, it's graduated. Now a couple of neat things that you can actually do with this. First off is uh, you, you've obviously got brightness, contrast, and saturation settings. Um, but you've also got clarity, which is really quite neat. So you can actually make certain areas uh, that you actually select stand out from the image, which I find really quite useful, especially when you're adding a graduated color um, filter to the image. So in this case, I've actually got orange selected here. Now that actually, to me, doesn't quite look right and it looks a bit muddy. So what I'm going to do is click on that and I'm going to go to my color picker and I'm going to choose a different color. So you can actually essentially add any color to your graduated filter as you want. So in this particular case, I'd like a sort of a darker orange to match the orange hues of the sunlight that are that are on these pancake rocks that I took uh, photographed in New Zealand. Now that's slightly a little bit too much. That's no, that's not too bad to begin with. So once, once I've selected a color here, you can either choose to fine tune your hue selection in uh, increments of one, or you can actually change the amount of saturation by using this slider. So I'm going to leave it just set to 100, and I'm going to click OK. So as you can see, uh, it's quite an interesting effect that you can actually add to, to your image, and you can especially if your highlights in your sky are very light, you can bring back a lot of detail back into your image that um, predominantly wasn't uh, vis visually there originally. So that's how we essentially use the graduated filter. Now down the bottom you'll notice there's a show overlay checkbox, so you can actually turn off that overlay so you don't notice it. Now if I go up to the preview icon at the top, you can see the adjustment that I've made to the image, which is pretty, pretty neat. I'm going to increase the clarity because that's also, uh, I think that helps the mountains stand out a little bit more as well. Now I've lost blue, a little blue in, in the sea itself, but for this particular example, I'm not really going to worry about it. So that's pretty neat. Next, what we can do is actually to, to get off the graduated filter you actually need to change tools <laughs> for starters because it can be a little bit um, iffy if you are trying to jump back and forth and you, you, you haven't actually used this tool before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump across to the adjustment brush. Uh, you can either click on it once again or press K on your keyboard to 
bring up the adjustment brush panel and what you'll notice is you'll have a quite a reasonable size radius for your uh, your actual brush itself which can be changed using um, the bracket keys on your keyboard so you can actually change the size or you can use the size slider that appears in the actual panel itself now um, what you'll also notice with the adjustment brush is you have the majority of the uh, sliders from the basic panel once again but you also have some new ones which are really uh, quite neat so along with size you can actually feather your actual selection so in this case if I reduce the amount that's feathered you'll notice that uh, the actual dotted uh, outline around my selection has come a lot closer in I'm going to bring that back again uh, you can also adjust the flow of the brush itself which means as you actually make your selections and you hold down your mouse and drag across your image it'll determine how fast the adjustment comes out across your image it's sort of like um, a, a spray brush where you can adjust the the amount of pressure uh, when you're actually doing like like a spray can and the amount of pressure that actually comes out as you're actually spraying it on um, well in this particular case we're obviously not spraying it on but it, it that sort of gives you a reasonable idea of how that actually works and then you can also adjust the the density so for example if you don't want the density to be 100% you can knock it back so its uh, opacity is a lot less okay so what you can do now you can make multiple selections so to start off with I'm gonna just drag across the sky here just to show you what is possible so once you've actually made one adjustment you'll notice up in the right hand corner here that you can actually see a little icon that has appeared and that is one selection and when you actually hover over it it actually displays the selection you've made over your image now you can turn on auto mask and also show mask and it'll actually show you the mask that you've made and you can also choose uh, the actual color of the overlay mask itself so if I click on that I can actually choose whether I want to display it in a particular color to make it um, obvious to me that I've actually made that mask itself you you have some brightness and opacity settings here uh, and you can also choose whether the color indicates the affected areas or the unaffected areas so in this case I'm just gonna leave it on the affected areas and hit OK now once you've made one selection and you've made some adjustments and I'll just take show mask off so we can now that's quite quite horrible I must admit but it does prove uh, or it does display what we're actually talking about which is the, is the main point here um, once you've made your first selection if you want to make more all you got to do then is go to the check icon here and click on that to create a new adjustment so that retains the original adjustment you've made but it now allows you to make another adjustment so in this particular example I'm going to go in here into the shadows areas here and I'm going to make some adjustments so what I've done there I've made a selection and I'll just tick on show mask again for you there's the mask that I've created but in this case no I don't want to darken it so I'm actually going to lighten those areas so as you can see you can make several different selections uh, using this adjustment brush um, and make a whole range of different adjustments to your image according to what you actually want to achieve so it is quite a quite a neat tool um, that you should really consider using when you're actually editing your photos in Camera Raw.